Hey YouTube land, Ty Kanders there doing another action figure review and today we're having a look at more Joy Toy uh, Ultramarines figures from the Warhammer 40,000 line and this is the Ultramarine Terminator Chaplain Brother Vanus and he is one of the newer figures that have been released now fortunately mine has gotten a little bit on the soaked side if you probably hear in the background the rain hit pelting off the roof uh, when I moved from where I normally, from the house to where I normally do my reviews, we got a little bit soaked on the way over, and the rain is fairly heavy. So I'm going to try and try and see if I can drown out the sound of the rain with the sound of my voice. Hopefully that's more uh, appreciative. But we'll have a quick look at the box. <clears throat> so the box is one eighteen scale. It contains one. 12 centi 12.7 centimeter collectors action figures it has all the joy toy logos image of the figure on the box on the back it shows the content of what's in the box you have the chaplain himself and a few accessories most notably he has just two weapon options which is what a chaplain normally has and a set of swappable interchangeable hands so for this guy he does stand in the he is part of the 118 scale line now what I will say is that he has some hindrance with his articulation but we'll just go through what he comes with first so initially I haven't swapped out the hands that he came with so the default hands are the trigger finger hands and the grip hand for the Crosserus, Crosserus, is it the Crosserus is there? No, it's the Crosserus Arcanum is the weapon, Crosserus is their energy shield. So he has these two kind of outstretched hands, and then he has a corresponding left and right grip hand. So at the moment he has his right grip and left trigger finger, and there's a right trigger finger and left grip hand. So if you want to swap the weapons around, and have him holding his Storm Bolter on his other hand, you can do so now i will say one thing that is there's a few things about this guy i love the aesthetic look of him and he is based off one of the current models for the terminators uh, um terminator chaplains he is quite hindered and we'll get into that in a second i'll have a quick look at the overall sculpt he does have some movable parts on him that kind of can be positioned out of the way for articulation he has a kind of ball, dual ball jointed, um, he has a ball joint at the waist and then he has a uh, ball joint at the diaphragm. And then turning him around, you can see he's wearing a cloak. He has the badge of office for the chaplains on this side, which is usually denoted by skull motifs. And he has the, it's hard to say, tell that he's even an ultramarine because it doesn't have the standard ultramarine symbol on him. But he is an ultramarine um, chaplain. I think the only way you can probably tell that he's ultramarine is I think he does have one or two icons on him. Or does he? Actually, it's kind of hard for us to tell that he's even an ultramarine. The only thing really that gives it away is the blue shoulder pad. Um, most notably with chaplains, the way they work is they are all generally, they all generally wear black armor. And then their one shoulder pad will denote which chapter they're from. So on this case, it's this one, which has the, the Terminator symbol with the chapter coloring markings on it. If this guy was a Blood Angel, this would be red. If this guy was a Dark Angel, this would be green. He'd also probably be an interrogator chaplain and not a standard chaplain. Um, if he was a Space Wolf, he'd have that kind of Space Wolf gray on him. But I think the Space Wolf ones are called Room Priests. So there are slight differences within the chapters, but for the most part, if it was a Imperial Fist, this would be a bright yellow. So, and so on and so forth. But he is quite nicely done. You have some jewels that are nicely painted on him. And he has his Storm Bolter, which is quite a nice accessory. It's a bit hard to get out of his hand. But you can see it is the kind of standard look of the Imperial Storm Bolter. It's even nice that they actually kind of drilled out where the barrels would be. On the miniatures, you have to do this yourself. 
but they actually have this all nicely laid out it is quite a nice vibrant red as well for the casing and it's like a gunmetal with a bit of gold trim on it for the actual case and it's one of the drum magazines there's two versions of the storm bolters there's the drum magazine storm bolter which is this one and then there's just a standard kind of dual clip one where it has two um, magazines side by side so it's quite nice to see again these things are all the kind of iconography of a chaplain and he has his iconic skull head or skull helmet there isn't an alternate helmet or head unmasked head for this guy which is not a bad thing because getting to move this head into position is quite finicky because it is quite sunk back in fact if you have something small you can move it in behind it to kind of move it but they don't give you anything offhand to actually move it around i'm just grabbing stuff that i have down here but like see for example you wanted to position it more forward you'd have to get something at the moment i'm just using the uh weapon off the orakai but like you can move the head it is all on the double ball joint where uh, it's a ball joint where it needs to meets the body and a ball joint where it need, meets the actual neck but because it's so sunk back into this armor piece it's really hard it would have been nice if they had designed this i know it wouldn't have been true to how they're done but designed this in such a way that you could remove this panel and maybe be able to adjust the head the way you wanted instead of doing stuff like that most terminators have this sunken design this armor is slightly different to normal terminators so he has the ball joint in the head the joints on the waist he has his bicep swivel he has dual jointed elbows which don't get a great range of movement because of the terminator armor he has a ball joint in the wrist for when you switch out the arm or the hand you have decent articulation in the hips it is hindered by his all this garb that are on him especially the cloak uh, but he can go into a sort of seated position he does have dual jointed knees but you're not going to get much out of the double joint it will once you get it past a certain clearance you can utilize it but it will start hitting off the back of his leg he does have a single jointed ball or a single ball joint on the ankle he has the toe articulation there is peg holes now the one other accessory i didn't show off and i don't have one to hand is he does come with a clear base uh all the newer models or the newer figures co going forward seem to have these large clear bases kind of something similar akin to these that came with the uh, mcfarland stuff or the mcfarland bases if you're familiar with those similar idea but just in a clear plastic so there is that and then for his crosserus arcanum which is his melee weapon this is the thing they beat people to a pulp with this thing is an energy weapon so it looks pretty good i much prefer this one over the standard power armored version this one looks like it could do damage whereas the one that comes with the standard power armor chaplain which i don't have well it's not power armor, it's the primaris armor the one that comes to him looks more like a walking cane than an actual melee weapon but this thing looks pretty brutal so it looks like it could do some serious damage to you if it was so inclined to smack off you but now here is where the most of the restriction with the arms come in with these shoulder pads the way they designed this guy now and i did ask around on some of the channels if the other terminators for the other loyalist terminators as in the ultramarine terminators and any of the other good guys have the same design setup as this guy this guy apparently is unique to have this setup and it's a bit of a shame so the way his shoulder pauldrons or shoulder pads here are connected there is i'm not sure if you'll be able to see it but there's a small bar coming out from the middle of this armor piece or the from the top of this armor piece it connects into this shoulder pad so there's a little bit of leeway there's not much it doesn't give you any way as good movement as you would expect it really hinders you can move the arms forward a bit but once it gets to around this point it will start knocking off the elbow and you won't be able to raise it up that much you can move the arms out to the side a bit 
but not as much as you'd expect. There isn't the extra articulation that gives you that extra pop on it. I'll show you what I mean in a minute. But all, all in all, he is quite nice. So I'm just bringing the tape measure. So you can see he is about five and a quarter. And then if you bring it up to his crosserus, if you have it in kind of a more neutral position, it's about nearly six, around six and a half inches. So he is a big lad. And we'll bring in a standard Marine. This is one of the earlier 1.0 versions. So you can see him standing next to one of them. He does stand a little bit taller then, which is true to form because Terminators are supposed to be a bigger armor set and it's supposed to be bigger than a standard Marine. And what I'm gonna do, I have him here handy. It's, here is one of the Chaos Terminators. Now I can't remember if I did a review for these guys. I think I might have done. Um, I believe I did. Now the way the shoulder pauldrons are done on these is it's very similar to the older. They did change up how the Marine arms or shoulder pads are attached. On the newer ones, or at least most of the newer ones, there is a separate kind of O-ring with a loop on it that goes around the inside of the shoulder and it connects onto the shoulder pad and it connects it that way. On these earlier ones, these are one of the kind of first Terminators they did. The shoulder pad is actually attached with a double dumbbell kind of peg onto the shoulder pad itself. And that gives you a lot more range of movement on these guys it doesn't restrict the shoulders from going up you can't really do this with this guy the most you can get his arm up is about that which is a shame you can only really get him into a i know on the box it shows his arm up all the way up and i don't know if it was the prototype or they redesigned it but you cannot get really get that same pose on the box that they show the arm doesn't raise up much enough clearance to give you that whereas on these older terminators they do give you a lot more clearance i would imagine hopefully somewhere along the lines they might remedy this if they do a revisit on this design and go with the newer style or this style connection point it is my only real gripe on this guy he is very limited on posability where this is really limits him even though these guys are supposed to be big and chunky and fairly you know well i wouldn't say slow moving but they're fairly like bricks they're like tanks walking tanks basically it is a shame that his arms are so restricted it would have been so nice i'm hoping maybe someone might come up with a uh, an upgrade kit for this guy whereas if you cut those pieces off and they you be able to pop this the arms out of the socket they'll give you a piece that we can put in and swap it around so the arms get way more range of movement because it would be so much nicer to have this guy be able to do the same to be able to lift his arm to the same extent that this guy can so you can see the two of them side by side even though the dust of that restriction it is a nicely done and very nicely sculpted figure so my two main takeaways from this guy he is good he is nice but this headpiece like it is true to how the miniature looks and it is exactly how it should be it's just a wish they could have maybe designed the thing that you could cut it would cut open the back piece and see and where this is you could pull that up giving you access to the headpiece so it makes it easier to manipulate or maneuver the head into position instead of having to fiddle with it and the shoulder pads those are my two main gripes. It's probably the same main gripes that most people who review this guy has. I don't know if any of the other figures have the same issue. Any other Terminator figures have this issue. I don't have any of the other ones. I know there is a Terminator Captain. Which is one of the newest figures. So that may have been remedied on him. And there is the Terminator squads. The Blood Angel Terminator squads. Which I don't have because I'm not a big... I, I'm not a fan of... Uh, I'm not saying I'm not a fan of Ter Blood Angels. But I have two chapters that I want to collect for the Space Marines, the Ultramarines and the Black Templars. And throwing an extra chapter into that mix just makes it far too expensive to keep going with these guys. So I'm going to, I'm kind of relegating to just these, to the Ultramarines and uh, Black Templars. And obviously the Chaos stuff is separate. But 
for ultramarine for the loyalist base marines and kind of limiting which chapters i pick up i may pick up some dark angels because they just look really good and it's just it's they're the main kind of chapters i collect in miniature form as well so the, it, there is that to consider i don't collect blood angels in the miniatures i collect ultramarines and black templars and dark angels so they're my kind of main guys along with legion of them but that's a completely separate thing so there you go guys i'm gonna wrap this up here i hope you enjoy watching this video and i hope you stuck around for the the whole lot and please give this a thumbs up and share with friends and see if i can get some more subscribers added to my channel i would like to hit another uh well i have 3000 at the moment i'd like to hit the 4000 mark if hopefully before christmas i know it's a big wish there's not too many weeks left at this stage if you're watching this at the time this goes up but hopefully i might be able to get somewhere close to that and uh as always i hope you enjoy your day and sorry about the rain in the background but unfortunately i don't have anything to counteract it at the moment but when i do i'll have a better setup so hopefully you enjoy this video stuck around for the end and as always i hope you have a good day and enjoy your day cheers guys